to turn u into a single complex number, we need to do the division. And of course, when we're in component form, we do the division by multiplying by the complex conjugate of what is on the denominator. And so we're going to multiply by 1 minus 2i, which of course, being a fraction, we have to multiply the top by exactly the same value. All right, so that's the steps. So on the top, we're going to expand the two brackets. Let's put brackets around that. So we're going to have 1 times root 2 is just going to be root 2. 1 times a negative a root 2 is still going to be negative a root 2i. And then the second part, negative 2i, we're going to subtract minus 2 root 2 i and then a negative times a negative makes a positive we're going to have positive uh, 2a root 2 i squared and we're going to leave it like i squared as well all right let's make this a little easy to read by going sideways on the bottom um hopefully we know when you multiply a complex number by the conjugate uh, you get a squared plus b squared which is going to be one plus four because two squared is four uh, and of course, that comes out of a plus b times a minus b is a squared minus b squared. But having an uh, i on the squared part, when you square i, you get negative 1. So it turns into negative 1 times 2 squared, which is 4. Right, so we'll simplify and call the numerator as well. So there's i squared on the numerator. Um, and so that's going to turn into a minus. And so if we collect the terms without an i, we will get root 2 minus 2a root 2. And if we collect the terms with an i, we will get, well, uh, let's take the minus sign out and we'll get a root 2, we could have actually taken root 2 out, uh, plus 2 root 2 times i, and that's all divided by 5. All right, so we divide 5 into each part and we will have, uh, what shall we do? Shall we factorize? I don't know if factorizing it makes it look any better. So root 2 minus 2a root 2 divided by 5. And then we're going to have minus a root 2 plus 2 root 2 divided by 5 times i. And we have it in the form of x plus i y. x and y are real and exact. So I brought um, our equivalent version of u down and to turn it into exponential form of the complex number, we need to find the modulus and the argument of the complex number. And when we're also told that a equals three. So that's the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put three in for a and I'll get root two minus six root two and that's negative five root two on five, which is kind of handy. And on the other side, we've got, 3 root 2 plus 2 root 2, well, what do you know? 5 root 2 on 5i. All right, so let's simplify that even further and we'll get negative root 2 minus root 2 on i. Okay, the, the modulus is going to be how should we write this? The modulus of u is equal to the square root of <laughs> negative root 2 squared, negative root 2 squared plus negative root 2 squared. So we know the modulus, which is r in this case, is the square root of 2 plus 2, square root of 4, which is just going to be 2. So we don't make a mistake when we're finding the argument, which is the angle. Um, you should always do a little sketch in your head of where actually is this, because it's pretty easy to do. The real part is negative root two. So if we went to negative root two, and the imaginary part is negative root two. So if we go to negative root two on the imaginary axis, this is the real axis, and this is the imaginary axis. You wouldn't draw it, you would just do this in your head. Visualize where it is. And you go, oh, well, the point that we're looking for, the complex number is there. And the angle there or that we're looking for is here. Now, from the diagram, you know that that is going to be negative 135. 
degrees, but we should demonstrate that as we work it out. So we would go the argument of u is equal to the inverse tan of the uh, the imaginary part, which is negative root 2, divided by the real part, which is negative root 2, which is the inverse tan of 1. And of course, there's two answers for the inverse tan of 1, 45 degrees and 225 degrees, which is negative 135 degrees, or negative 3 pi on 4. And we should work definitely with radians. So we're going to say negative 3 pi on 4. All right, now that we have the two parts, it's a very simple matter of putting u together. u is equal to 2 e i negative 3 pi over 4. And we are done. Right, so to find the square root of our complex number, we're actually going to take the exponential form and raise it to the power of a half, because a half is a square root. Right, and what we know with exponents is it applies to everything in the brackets. So we're going to get the square root of 2, which we can write as square root of 2. And for the exponent that we already have, when you have a power raised to a power, you multiply them. So we're going to have a half times i to the negative 3 pi on 4, which raises some interesting points. You may remember from our previous part that our complex number is sitting here in the third quadrant. Imaginary axis is the vertical axis, and the real axis is the horizontal axis. All right, and because we're going to do a half of the angle, what's going to happen is that angle is going to become smaller. It's going to become a half of what it was. So we would expect to answer somewhere in the fourth quadrant. All right. But now that the angle is a half of what it originally was, we should take into account that there are equivalent angles. So if we went around the circle and came back to the line again, we would have an equivalent angle. So the first angle that we have is minus 3 pi on 4. And then the second time we go around, we're going to add another 8 pi on 4, which we, which would give us negative 11 pi on 4. Uh, that's the equivalent point, equivalent position. And like, the only reason we would do that is because we're going to take a half of the angle. If we take a half of the larger angle, it may fall back. The answer may fall back within the boundaries of what we are allowed for theta. And in fact, it does. That's why there are two answers. Um, so when we do our question, we should include the second part, or it's going to be root 2 e to the half of i to the negative 11 pi on 4. All right, and that gives us two answers. The first one for the square root of u is going to be root 2 e to the, let's put it first, negative 3 pi over 8 i, or root u is equal to square root of 2 e to the negative 11 pi over 8. The negative 11 pi over 8 has gone um, past the boundary of negative pi. Negative pi, of course, is negative 8 pi on 8. It's gone past by 3 pi on 8, which means we're in the second quadrant. Oh, let's go back to our diagram. And it's going to be somewhere there, whereas that angle is 3 pi on 8 past 180, or pi. And that leaves us with 5, positive 5 pi on 8 as the answer. Now, it's within the acceptable range of negative pi to pi, so it's an answer we should include. And so we change that negative 11 into 5 pi over 8, which gives us two answers. The question asks us to give r and theta. So for the first one, r is root 2, and theta is negative 3 pi over 8. For the second one, r 
is also root 2, and theta is on 8.